Alright, welcome back to quarter one, week five, day one. This is video number 19. This is the max start file. Today we are going to set up a bunch of different preferences, or actually we're going to cover a bunch of different preferences and make sure everything is set up perfectly for your max start file. The max start file is actually a file that will set up your environment every time you start 3D Studio Max, you'll have the same setup, which will include a cube, a bunch of reference layers, and everything you need to get started. So without further ado, let's go. I have a nice cube here with the see-through material on it, and if I hit F for front, I've got some concept art in the back. If I hit left, I've got a different plane in the back. From the top view, I have a different plane. So that if from the, I'll go front again, select my object, I'll go and hit P for perspective. So now here's my cube. What's also nice is I want to set up how my layers are set as well. So if I hit my layer explorer, you can see I've got my different concept arts here or things here. But I want some more things. So I'm going to actually adjust some of these. I'm going to select all three of these. And I'm going to right click. Oops, let me get that going too. So, so where was I? Right click. And I am going to put them all into one layer. So I'm going to create layer. I'm going to double click on it and you'll notice everything's in there now. I'm going to rename this layer right there. All right, I'm going to call this reference. So this is my reference layer and I can show it there. I can actually, from the front view, I can hide it so I don't have to see it and I can also freeze it. Okay, now if I freeze it, you'll notice that all of these objects, if they're frozen, um, they turn gray and that's going to be bad. So we want to make sure we check uncheck the show frozen in gray. I'm going to actually select my object, go over here, zoom out, grab all of these, zoom in, right click on one, and I'm going to go to object properties and show frozen in gray needs to be turned off. All right, cool. So now I can go back to here, um, hit front and then hit P for perspective. So now what I've done is I've have them. So if I freeze the reference layer, oops, if I, uh, let me see, left front view, left there. If I freeze the reference layers, I can't select them, but they're still going to be colored in the right way. But I don't want to actually freeze them yet because I want to set this up so it's going to be properly organized every single time. So just some of the things that I would make sure that are set up in your environment are, <clears throat> number one, right click on the, the, the snaps toggle. Make sure your options enable access constraints are set. Your home grid should be set to 10, 10, 10, and then your user grids can be set to whatever. The box itself, I actually created a starting cube. I call, I started box. I made sure, you've got to make sure your numbers are set first. But then I went ahead and built a cube that is 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters. Of course, it's a cube. That's, that's going to be equal on all sides. The next thing I did is I made sure all my preferences were set. So I right-click here, and I go to Configure Viewports and make sure that my display performance is set to 4096. My statistics are set to Triangle, Edge, Vertex, Total Selection. My view cube is off. And then I hit Apply. Make sure all that's applied. Over here, my starting cube is actually going to be put on a whole separate layer. So I'm going to click it, right click, and I'm going to create a new layer, which is right here. Okay, this layer, I'm going to click on, right click, rename this layer uh, modeling, and this modeling will be in this starting cube, so that's fine. Now, for reference, we don't necessarily want that to render. So from the front view, we can turn all this rendering off. And then it should not render from now on. So if I have perspective view on and I shift F and oh, I should change that too. Um, I'm going to hit F10. That will bring up my options here for rendering. And then under this, I can set my output size. Generally, it's going to be HDTV. Um, which is 1920 by 1080. Uh, sometimes we'll do 8.5 by 11 when we're rendering out, but generally 
1920 by 1080 is good. I'm going to close this and then uh, I'm hit Z for zoom. Z, okay, cool. So now I can actually see what's going on. So now you can see I've got a modeling layer. I've got a reference layer. If you wanted to, you can create a new layer now and rename it. I'm going to call this Bones, although we won't need that for a long time. And then I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to rename this one. Uh, and I'm going to call this Lights. Generally, we won't be using either of these layers. Modeling and reference are the ones we use all the time. But if you want to put them in now, that's one less thing you have to do later. So once you have all this set up, you can minimize that. Um, what other settings do we want to make sure of? We already did that. Oh, preferences. So we want to go, actually, let's go to customize preferences. And make sure your scene level is 500. That's the important one. Click OK. And then once you have this scene set up just the way you want it. Now, the, I used these background um, planes. They're not frozen yet because I'm always going to want to create the material and add them to it. Um, you could create that material as well if you want now. Um, I'm going to wait and do that every time that I actually create a new file. But you'll notice that my length is 250 by 500. Now, back when I did this in 24 with 2014 I did equal squares but this lets you know which way is the wide side so by 250 by 500 just gives you more rectangle so you know which which one of these numbers will give you the adjustment that you need so from the front view um, front uh, I make it pink for front for fuchsia left is lavender and then top is taupe so th that's my logic behind it so you can ignore that if you want. I don't care. You can make it whatever color you want. My modeling material itself is a dark blue. And the shape color itself here under starting cube, which I renamed, is white. Or like a light blue. Either one of those is fine. Because what that does is it'll give you an actual nice color to work with. So that you can still see through your object. Now when it gets to the actual object itself, you hit M for material. And then what I did is I double I went here and double clicked on one of these for your standard default material. Double clicked on it and then I changed the diffuse color to like a dark blue. Click OK and then I changed the opacity to 45. And then I went ahead and made sure that shows up in the viewport and then I applied it to the object there. I'm going to delete that one now so that it's there. And then that's it. Basically, I made sure the wireframe is on, and our edge faces are, are on, and that wireframe over it right is not. And that's all the settings I set. Now, once you have it set up, and you can change your mind and, and lay something out and then change your mind, but once you have it set up, we're going to do a couple things. We're going to, number one, we're going to go to File, Save As, and we're going to save this as Max Start. And we're going to, first, we're going to go into Libraries, Documents, 3ds Max, scenes now assuming you put everything default into where it's supposed to go you should have access to this now you're going to create a max start file from the object you have what that does is it saves everything um pretend like just hit save for you i already did it so i don't want to read uh, yeah i'll redo it save as max start sure okay i'm going to replace mine because i did set up a few more things to make some creature comforts. Um, you'll see my statistics are ready. Uh, the, the, you want to make sure that that's set as max start, no spaces, and it's set in your scenes folder um, because that way every time you start up max, it will have this layout. Now, for customizing the actual UI, for some reason it doesn't save everything in there. You also have to go to save custom UI scheme, and you don't have to have shift F on. Customize, but if you did, you want to redo it, you could. Anyway, save custom UI, and I'm also going to call this max start. It can be all lowercase, you don't have to camel case it. Max start, and then hit OK. By hitting max start, it's going to say, hey, all this stuff is good, and you say OK. It thinks a minute, and now you can shut down and restart, and whenever you restart, it's going to restart 
in this particular layout, which is really useful. Okay, so that's where we're going to stop, I think, today, because I think that's really important, and it's easy to, to sort of make it through there uh, and stop. So we're going to stop right there, and I'm actually going to break up the next video into the starting of this section uh, of the modeling. So let's do that. All right. So I will see you in the next video where we actually start modeling and practice modeling using that sword art. All right, I'll see you next time.